in public quite a bit. Usually I'm talking about bikes and buildings, and I'm super confident about that. This time I'm talking about something that's a little bit different, which is, uh, you know, bikes can get political, sure. Have, if you've ever heard of the, uh, the all-powerful bike lobby. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but now I'm just gonna talk about politics more generally. Um, do you think that this describes our political situation today? Do we have lots of great candidates coming out to do healthy civil debates? Do we have meaningful discussions of complex topics? Do you get to walk into the voting booth and vote for somebody you love most of the time? And do you feel like the person who ultimately gets in that seat has support, the support of most of the electorate? No? <laughs> I'm shocked. Um, and the statistics bear that out. Like, trust in government, particularly the federal government, is, is not great. Uh, so we're not in a great place. We're in, if you have come through the last four or five years and don't feel like we're in a very dark place, great, I appreciate your optimism. Please look at this presentation with that level of optimism. For the rest of us, we're gonna try to figure out if this might be a way to help us get out. So a little bit about me. Why am I qualified to talk about politics in general? Um, you know, I'm just a voter. I'm a voter who has been exposed to a lot of different voices and different places. I grew up in suburban South Carolina and Manhattan. Those places have very different politics, if you don't know. Um, and I'm interested in weird things, like corn subsidies and the home mortgage interest deduction. And those weird things aren't things that typically get talked about in political campaigns. Um, that actually, corn subsidies got talked about in West Wing, which is to just show how not how much of a third rail it was. Um, so, you know, often I don't go into that voting booth enthusiastic about who I'm voting for, and we'll get more into that. Um, so, how do elections work? You think you know how elections work, right? You got Han up against Luke. Luke gets more votes. Luke wins. Now he's the mayor of Cloud City. Um, but sometimes it's more complicated than that, right? Like. What if a third person wants to run, like Leia? Now, the Skywalker side of the, uh, the group splits the vote, and suddenly Han wins. I mean, it's not a terrible outcome, but we know in a head-to-head -head competition, Luke won over Han. If there's any Han fans in the audience, please don't beat me up afterwards. It's just an example. Um, so, you know, so this is a weird outcome. Like, maybe not the outcome that is most reflective of what the community wants. Um, and you know that's kind of an evenly split vote, but even wackier things can happen. In fact, say somebody who's a little bit sneaky could recruit somebody with the same last name to run in an election uh, that would confuse voters and just siphon off just enough of the voters to make the difference in a, in a close election. That actually happened in South Florida, and I think somebody's going to jail, not the not the person running, so they still got their seat. Um, so weird stuff happens. Now there are ways of dealing with this, right? We can do runoffs. So uh, this is an example of a local Orlando City Council election where um, Edward Lynham was just a few points ahead of Regina Hill in the three-way in the three-way initial vote. So it went to a runoff because neither of them had 50%, and Regina Hill came actually uh, out pretty far ahead ultimately in the final election. So that shows how that that can flip when people have the opportunity to do a head-to-head -head match. But what else have issues? So um, one issue is they cost money, and some jurisdictions aren't willing to pay the extra money to do a runoff. If you think about partisan elections, you can end up with four different elections for the same seat because you've got the primary, primary runoff, then a general election, and a general election runoff, and that's just impractical, and we don't see jurisdictions doing that. Um, in addition, runoffs don't work so well in reflecting more complicated races. This is a race in, uh, a Florida, for a Florida congressional primary where there were, oh, I didn't actually count, there's 10 candidates, and four of them are within a few points of each other. So yeah, we can run off the top two, but is that really gonna reflect the best outcome for the electorate? Maybe, but maybe not. So you can get weird outcomes when you have this many people running. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this may seem seem like um, an unlikely scenario, but these are the actual numbers from a vote in the Clearwater City Council election that actually um, prompted some action in that location. Now, I don't know if Mr. Bunker has any relationship in terms of personality to Mr. Bader, <laughs> but I do know that 73% of the electorate voted for somebody else. So that, to me, is a little bit concerning that that person is now gonna hold the seat. Does he really represent the people that he is there um, to stand in for? 
So you end up with problems, let's go back to our three-way race between Han Lei and Luke. You end up with problems like strategic voting. So let's say I'm a huge Leia fan. I want to go into that booth and I would be really excited to vote for Leia, but I'm not sure if she's the one that's going to be the, the best person to beat Han in this race. And what I know even more than the fact that I want Leia to win is I want a Skywalker to win, right? So I can vote for Leia and risk the wasted vote scenario, or I can vote for Luke, who I think has a better chance, but what do I do? I mean, neither of those is really gonna make me super happy. In addition, um, I may get pressure from my friends. I can't vote for Leia because I'm gonna mess, up, mess it up for the Skywalkers. Or Leia may get pressure to drop out of the race entirely to avoid this scenario altogether. So we're making a lot of decisions in the voting booth and when we're choosing candidates out of fear. And that's not a good place to be making decisions from. So what I've been talking about is the way most of us currently vote, which is through a plurality voting system, which means that the person with the more votes than everybody else wins, even if they don't get the majority of the vote, over 50%. Um, so there's problems with that. The first problem being you do not guarantee to get somebody with the majority of the vote. Uh, the second problem being strategic voting, what I was talking about, that fear of wasted votes, the idea that candidates might be discouraged from running, and boiling down the candidates to just a few choices results in fewer interesting debates between what might be outlying candidates. So if the system is not getting the results we want, there's a couple options. We can work really hard for the candidates we care about, and you should keep doing that, absolutely. But also, maybe we should question how the system is set up to begin with. So there is another way uh, of doing voting. What if my ballot looked like this? If I was able to go in and say, I can confidently vote for Leia because she is my favorite, but I can also vote for my backup, Luke. And he, I mean, we know Hans will be too, so he'll get my third choice. Um, but I get to not worry about wasting my vote. Leia doesn't get pressure to drop out of the race, and everybody's happy, right? So, so how does that work? Well, assuming that the, the we got the same numbers as the first example, um, let's say Leia comes in last, her votes, um, she, she's not going to win, right? She came in last. But her voters still get to participate because they've got to choose their second choices. And her second choice votes go to either Luke or Han. We expect the Skywalker Coalition to stay together, and essentially we get what would have been a similar outcome to a runoff, which is Luke comes out ahead. But it's also more complicated than, right, than that, right? Because in that initial race, we don't know how many people were doing that strategic voting, trying to guess who was going to win. So what you might find is there were some voters like me who voted for Luke when they really wanted to vote for Leia. So in this scenario, Leia actually comes out ahead, just edging out Luke. It can happen. Um, <laughs> so Luke's votes get redistributed to Han and Leia, and Leia wins. First female mayor of Cloud City. And this actually seems to be what happens in cities that adopt ranked choice voting. Um, there, we see more representation of women. Don't worry, guys, it's still well under 50%, but we do see more representation of women. Uh, we also see more representation of people of color. So um, those are outcomes that generally align with being more representative of the people that they represent in those jurisdictions. So we know that politics can get very contentious, right? One of the good outcomes of ranked choice voting is that there's incentives in the system for people to work together because we know we gotta beat Vader. Like, we can argue among ourselves in the Jedi Alliance all day, but at the end of the day, we all gotta to agree to rank each other second and third so that we can beat Vader. And we see this happening in real elections. We see um, different candidates getting out, putting out joint campaign ads, and saying, you know, vote for me first, absolutely, but vote for this person second, because Candidates are incentivized to talk not just about where they disagree to differentiate themselves from each other, but also to talk about where their values align so that they can see their values ultimately represented in whoever wins the election. Let's talk about partisanship, hyperpartisanship, favorite thing. Um, so let's say we're in a world where people <laughs> have really, really strong loyalties. And most likely, once we get through the primaries, if you're a Marvel person, you are going to vote for House of Marvel. And if you are a DC person, you are going to vote for House of DC, regardless of who is actually running most of the time. So in that Marvel primary, 
Um, let's say you've got three, and it's very even more common in primaries to have large groups of people running, like what we saw in that, that Florida Congressional District primary. So let's say we've got Spider-Man, Daredevil, and Kingpin. Spider-Man and Daredevil split the hero vote, and then a, you know, wealthy real estate developer um, <laughs> <laughs> questionable ethics wins the primary. Um, can't imagine that happening. Um, uh, okay, so, so that's, we've taken care of the Marvel primary. What about the DC primary? Uh, tons of people sign up, which is super exciting, but also super confusing. And so at the end of the day, you know, there's so many people running, somehow Night Owl wins. <laughs> so now we're going to the general election, and we've got Kingpin versus Night Owl. So this is, you know, what we generally refer to less, as lesser of evils voting, or maybe evil versus boring, I don't know. Um, but it's not an ideal. And when you look at the numbers, we're talking about 38%. In that one congressional district, we were talking about a candidate representing his party who represented less than 22% of his own party. And now he is running to represent the entirety of our community. So that seems like not the best outcome. Um, also, when we're talking about hyperpartisanship, the ability to build coalitions that can get 20% of the vote that are maybe a little more extreme than the normal elect than the average elector um, is, is pretty good. So even within the parties, there's a danger of losing identity to the current plurality system. Well, what happens with ranked choice voting? Obviously, daredevil people are not gonna vote for Kingpin. They're gonna second choice Spider-Man. Spider-Man wins, moves on to the general. What's gonna happen on the DC side? I don't know. I'm a Marvel person. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say Green Lantern. And also, there's so many people, we would never have known what would have happened with ranked choice voting. But Green Lantern versus Spider-Man seems like a much better matchup Whichever side wins, we are probably going to have a better person in that office than we would have under the previous voting system. Can this really happen? People already do it all over the world and all over the country. And uh, in, in a world where there's lots of big things happening that are very much out of our control, ranked choice voting is actually something that can start right at the local level, that can start to make our local communities better and trickle up to uh, bigger platforms. There are already states that are using ranked choice voting in presidential primaries. This is something that can affect us all the way from the soil and water to the mayor, to the Senate, to the president. And it's something that can start right here, right now. It's got endorsements from across the political spectrum, independents, left and right, and lots of different organizations, including academics, so politics tomorrow, maybe could it be that you have the opportunity to vote for somebody you really care about? That you can have lots of candidates having civil competition, winners that ultimately have broad support of at least 50% of the population, and meaningful discussion of complex problems brought in by those candidates as well as candidates that might be single issue candidates. Somebody like Andrew Yang bringing in the discussion of UBI and not being forced out of the competition because they're worried about trying to consolidate around a single candidate. There is a group trying to bring this to Florida. Uh, it's called, creatively, Rank My Vote Florida. I think you can remember that. Um, there are already several communities that are working on getting ranked choice voting started. And there's actually, uh, there's some complexity happening at the state level with the attorney around whether or not we can actually get this going, but it seems like it's gonna get started soon. So if you would like, uh, what's the first thing you can do? Give it a try. This is a poll that I set up. Um, I did a couple experimental polls with different superheroes. Um, what I found out is Captain America wins every time he's actually in an election. <laughs> um, I already had this t-shirt. Um, but I would be interested to see if all of you, if there are other, I mean, I'm gonna go out on them and say maybe there's some other superhero views here. So if you vote, maybe we'll get a different outcome. Who knows? And you can actually, once you vote it, you can go through the whole process and see how the rounds work. You can also set up your own poll at rankit.vote. And as or probably more importantly, stay in touch with Rank My Vote Florida so that you can get involved either just to learn more about it or if you were totally convinced by my talk, come out and volunteer and donate. So um, what would you have to say? You've learned something today. Please pass it on. Tell your friends about Rank Choice Voting. And uh, here are the QR codes if you want to sign up or vote for your favorite tubes. 
Go to nerdnight.com to find a Nerd Night event near you. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for our latest presentation.